We have a 10 meter long cylinder, which is centered at the origin so that we have five, five meters above the origin and five meters of it below the origin and we are given its radius. There's also an electric field that exists in space and its equation is given to us. And the goal is to figure out what is the charge enclosed by the cylinder. Now at first, it just feels like, where do I start? I see some equations, I see some coordinates. <laughs> you ask me to calculate charge enclosed. Where do I start solving this? But one of the things that comes to my mind is, hey, this is a closed surface. And why that's important for me is because I know that Gauss's law can apply to closed surfaces. So that's where I start first. Because it's a closed surface, I go back to my Gauss's law and, and what's Gauss's law say? Gauss's law says that the total flux through the closed surface will always equal the charge enclosed by the closed surface divided by epsilon naught. And now I ask myself, okay, if I could calculate the total flux through this cylinder, then can I calculate my charge enclosed? Yes. If I calculate this, then the charge enclosed is just the total flux multiplied by epsilon naught. And so I know where to start now. I know my real problem is to calculate the total flux through the cylinder. So let's try doing that. So I ask myself next, hey, how do I calculate the flux? Well, if you've seen how to calculate the flux, flux through any surface, electric flux through any surface will equal the dot product of the electric field and the area vector. You've seen this in previous videos, right? And if you are to calculate the total flux, then we'll have to do a summation. Now in general, when we're dealing with, uh, you know, uh, random objects, this could be an integral and that could be really hard to solve. But over here, I see a cylinder with nice shapes. So that gives me hope that maybe I don't have to integrate. And the reason I get hope is because I can identify three distinct sur surfaces. I can identify this bottom flat surface, nice and flat surface. Let's call that a surface one. I have this top nice and flat surface, surface number two, and then I have this curved surface. The surface it goes like this, which is not really flat, but let's see what happens. So these are three surfaces that I can identify. So what I can try to do now is try and calculate the flux through each of them separately and then add them up and see if I can calculate my total flux. And then from there, I can see if I can calculate my charge enclosed, okay. All right, so let's see. Let's begin by calculating the flux at surface one. So the flux at surface one, that's going to be, from our definition, it's the electric field at that point, let's just call it as E1, dot A1, area at that point. And again, this could also be an integral if the electric field is changing, so we don't know. Let's see what happens. So I come to this surface and I first ask, I know how to calculate the area. I know the area is pi r squared, so that's not a big deal for me. The question is about electric field. How much is the electric field here? And for that, I go back to this scary looking equation, but let's see. So electric field is given to be 3y j cap. What does that mean? Well, first of all, the j cap is telling me the direction. It's saying that the electric field is in the y direction everywhere. You see, I only have a j cap. I don't have a k cap. I don't have an i cap. So ele electric field everywhere is in the y direction. That's one observation I do. And I can see that the electric field depends on the y coordinate. So if I know the Y coordinate, I can plug in, I can get the electric field. So at this point, at this point, can you tell what the electric field is going to be? So I want you to pause the video and see if you can figure out what the electric field at this point is. That's the first step, right, for us. All right, so I ask myself, what's the coordinate, Y coordinate at this point? That's all that matters to me, Y coordinate. And that is negative five, because it's five meters below origin. So upwards is positive, downwards is negative. And therefore, if I substitute minus phi, I get minus 15 j cap. And therefore, the electric field at that point, electric field at that point, let me call that electric field at E1, that's going to be minus 15 j cap. And what does that mean? Let's try and visualize. I mean, we can just do it mathematically, but let's try and visualize. What does it mean to have a minus 15 j cap electric field? Minus j cap means in the negative y direction, and so that means the electric field at this point is 15 
units, whatever the units are, the units are not mentioned, so we'll just assume it to be standard units, 15 units downwards. Negative J cap represents downwards. Okay, but I want to know the electric field everywhere, not just at this point, because I want to calculate the flux through the entire area. So what would the electric field at this point? Again, I want you to think about this. From this equation, do you think the electric field at this point on that bottom surface would be the same, or do you think it would be different? Well, if I go back to the equation, all that matters is the y-coordinate. What is the y-coordinate over here? That's again minus five, because again, this point is five meters below. The x and z coordinate might have changed, but that doesn't matter, which means the electric field over here is also gonna be the same, 15 downwards, negative 15 j cap, and it will be the same here. So good news, Good news for me, and that's why I'm smiling, is that this is a uniform electric field. Although, overall, the electric field is not uniform. It's changing with the y coordinate. But over this surface, the electric field is uniform. It's the same everywhere. That's great, because I don't have to do an integral now. Okay, so I know the electric field. Next, I have to figure out the area. What's the area? The area is just pi r squared. It's given as r is two. So area is going to be, let me just write that over here. Area is going to be, pi times two squared is four, so it's gonna be four pi meter squared. Again, now I'm gonna write the units. So it's gonna be standard units, I'm just gonna keep it as it is. So that's, that's area. But I need the vector area, so what's the direction of this area? We've seen before how to do that. You draw a perpendicular to it. Now for closed surfaces, the perpendicular is always pointing towards the outside, so our vector area is gonna be pointing outwards, in this case it'll be downwards. And so if I were to write the area vectorially, it's gonna be four pi, that's the magnitude. What's the direction? Direction is negative j. So I will write it as negative j. And now that I have these two, I can go ahead, plug in, and calculate what the flux is. And again, good idea to pause at this point and see if you can calculate this flux, and then probably you can try and calculate the flux second and third surface as well. All right, so, negative 15 times negative four pi, that's just going to be 15 fours are 60, so that's gonna be positive 60 pi. And j dot j, this is the very product. What is j dot j? j dot j is one. Why is it one? Because dot product has cos theta in it, and j and j means same direction, theta is zero, cos zero is one. And so you get just 60 pi, that's the flux the first surface. We could have done it directly without looking at j anymore because we would just say, hey, they're both in the same direction, dot product becomes one, and so it's just e times a. Could have done that as well. All right, so that's flux through the first surface. We can now similarly calculate the flux through the second surface. Again, what do you think it's gonna be? Well, let's calculate the electric field. The electric field at this point, the y coordinate is all that matters, it's plus five, so I get plus let me see, it's gonna be E2, it's gonna be 15 plus 15 J cap. And what about the area? Well again, the magnitude will be the same, four pi, and this time it'll point upwards. Because remember, area vector is always outwards. So area A2 would be four pi, this time positive J cap. And so if you dot them, again notice, you get 15 times four pi, that is 60, j dot j is one, so you get, again, 60 pi. And at this point, you might think, and or at least I used to think, but wait a second, in one case you're getting upwards, in the second case you're getting downwards, why am I getting both as positive? Why, I mean, shouldn't one be negative of the other, why is that? Well, because remember, flux is a measure of flow. Outward flow is positive, inward flow is negative. So even though here electric field is going up, it's flowing outwards, positive. Even though the electric field over here is going down, it is going outwards. That's why it's also positive. You get that? So don't get confused. It takes some time to getting used to, but outward flow is positive. That's what matters. In both cases, it was outwards. Okay, now let's go to the third one. The curved surface. And this is the part which looks really tricky because over here, the Y coordinate keeps changing and therefore the field is not uniform over the entire surface, oh no. <laughs> so does that mean we have to integrate? Not really. You see, again, I want you to <laughs> give it a try. 
See what's gonna happen. Just look at the electric field's direction carefully. Look at the area vectors that you would draw here. And you will see, you don't have to integrate to get the answer over here. Okay, let's do this. So because electric field is in the y direction everywhere, here it's gonna be upwards, here also it's gonna be upwards, downwards, downwards, everywhere it's gonna be upwards and downwards. Below this, it's gonna be negative and downwards, Be above this is gonna be positive and upwards. But if you were to look at the area vector at any one point, now you can't draw a single area vector for a curved surface. Whenever you have a curved surface, irregular shape, not flat surface, you have to take small, small sections. If I take a small section and draw an area vector, that area vector will point out this way, and the angle between the two would be 90 degrees. And that would be the same everywhere. If I were to draw an area vector, it'll come out over here, and the angle between this and this would be 90 degrees. And why is that exciting me? Because that means cos 90 is zero, so when you dot it, you get zero. So if you were to do E dot A everywhere, you just get zero everywhere. And you can logically think about this. Remember, flux is a measure of how much something is flowing out or into that surface. Now because electric field over here is parallel to the curved surface, nothing is flowing out of it. Nothing is flowing into it. And therefore, it kind of makes sense that the flux is zero. All right, so now that we have the total, all the flux values, the total flux would just be the summation of all three. That's 60 plus 60, that's 120 pi. And I can now equate it to charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. And there I go. Charge enclosed equals, equals 120 pi times epsilon naught. And we know the value of epsilon naught. We can plug that in and we get some answers and I'm pretty sure you can do that. <laughs> but that's it. That's, I'm gonna stop over here and we know how, how much charge is enclosed over here. And before I end, I wanna give you a slightly different problem. My question to you is what if we had everything exactly the same except that the electric field was three times modulus of y times j cap. How would things change? What would be the new enclosed charge? Can you try and find this? It's not gonna take much time because most of the calculation is gonna stay the same. Okay, let's see if you did this. If you look at the top surface, everything would be the same. E2 would be just 15j. A2 vector would still be the same you get the same answer. But this is where things will change. If I were to calculate E1, it's gonna be three times minus five, but the modulus of minus five is plus five, so it's gonna be plus 15 over here in the second case. Which means now, in the second case, electric field is going to be pointing upwards. But your area vector is gonna be pointing downwards, because area vector should always be outwards. And therefore now when I calculate phi one, that's gonna be a negative 60. And see what you get. You, and then you add up, you get zero. I mean, curved surface will still remain zero, but the total flux will become zero and the charge enclosed will now become zero.